have here today uh, one of the long-standing friends of the World Economic Forum. And three uh, numbers jump out to me, 7, 9, and 14. In 2007, uh, Chairman Wang and Dalian Wanda helped us open the first annual meeting of new champions in Dalian, uh, which we now call the Summer Davos. Uh, and he was instrumental in uh, helping bring that meeting to China and uh, being our host. In 2009, uh, he built a new convention center, a beautiful, modern, uh, high-tech uh, convention center uh, where uh, you really see uh, China's innovation capacity and China's entrepreneurship in action. Uh, and uh, it has really helped position the annual meeting of new champions as the world's foremost meeting on science, technology, innovation, and entrepreneurship. And in 14, in 2014, uh, Wanda became one of our first Chinese strategic partners. Uh, and we've had a fantastic collaboration. And I just want to thank Chairman Wang for his longstanding friendship uh, between uh, China and the World Economic Forum. And we're thrilled to hear your um, experience today on the future of sport and entertainment. So Chairman Wang, thank you. Our moderator for today, John Mickelson, please uh, join us on stage. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Chairman Wang, for com coming here. Um, I will give a one-minute introduction for those people who don't fully understand the, the breadth of what he has done. Um, he came from a, Chairman Wang came from a, a military family. His father was a, a war hero of sorts. He served in the army. And then he set up a property company in Dalian and built that into China's biggest property empire. But more recently, he has branched out into entertainment, into sport. He owns 20% of Atletico Madrid. He also um, bought AMC, um, uh, the, the big movie theater chain. So if you watch a movie theater anywhere in the world, it may well be owned by Chairman Wang. There is talk in America of him maybe being somebody who would buy Paramount Studios. He's right in the middle of all the things to do with entertainment and many things to do with sport. There's even talk of setting up a rival to the UEFA Champions League which we all know, whatever happens, would be won inevitably by Leicester City. <laughs> I am going to start with a question. You know, you, you were a practical man. You made your money um, in real estate, served in the army. Why did you start investing in entertainment and sport? What, what was the reason why you went into that direction? The two reasons, first. Real estate is a money spinner, but it cannot be sustainable and not stable. Therefore, we need to transition. Secondly, after development, we noticed that uh, in China in particular, people with money will go for health and entertainment. So entertainment is something that makes you happy. Sport is something that makes you healthy. And therefore, I've gone into tourism, sport, and entertainment. Um, movie theatres and that old pastime, that that is an old way of consuming film, that more people will want to consume entertainment at home, not in movie theatres. No, no problem. No. This is something I uh, debated this uh, with uh, Mr. Marley five years ago, because he said mobile film will replace cinemas. But it's been proven that uh, in China, cinemas are growing very fast in China. In 2015, uh, about 12,000 more screens. Uh, in 2016, there's 15,000 more screens added. It's got the most number of screens uh, in the world. In the last five years, the growth was uh, about 30% each year. But this is not the same traditional cinemas now. The cinemas in China are all in large shopping malls. There aren't standalone ones anymore. And they don't just show films. There are much about experience. For example, you can uh, listen to audio and the much fun element to it. So cinemas are no longer the same concept. And in shopping malls in China, they are going in the direction of providing entertainment providing experience. Shopping 
is reducing in its proportion of the business. So in China, you see that uh, you go into shopping centers to buy entertainment. So cinemas have very good income there. You can't take a, a girlfriend to, to, a, to a mobile phone to watch a movie. Um, on entertainment in China, in every country, if you own entertainment um, programs, you often have problems with the government. You produce a, a show they don't like. How do the relationship, uh, what has been your experience with the Chinese government when it comes to entertainment? Mm, well, uh, showing, screening is uh, not a problem, but content production will be uh, examined, censored, because uh, we all know in China there's a censor system. We also are involved in producing films. But uh, it is much more relaxed censorship. It's not like in the past. There are now things impossible to imagine in the past, but screened today. Hollywood films, for example, good uh, blockbusters and uh, arty films uh, from abroad can be screened in China. And also films in China the same. In other words, there is censor, but it's uh, much more relaxed. And recently, well, three months ago, there was a circular uh, saying that uh, censorship will be devolved to regions and not centralised as before. I think on the number of uh, American films or foreign films that can be shown in China, I think it's sort of 34 films a year. Would you like an open market? Would you like that limit to go? Uh, well, there are two types of control. One is 34 million films. These are blockbusters. In other words, uh, the investment is uh, over 100 million US dollars. There are only 34. Basically, this is money handed over to the US. Out of uh, uh, 34, most of it is American. So most people in China watch American films, not much of uh, British or French or German. The next thing is uh, buy up rights. In other words, uh, there's less investment but we can buy up the rights of distribution in China. This is more of the arty type of films, um, about a few dozens of that category. So the, that's the overall control. But there's a new model now known as joint production. There's no limit. In other words, the foreign companies working together with Chinese companies to produce films, as long as the Chinese investment is more than 30%, and uh, the cast contains at least one or two Chinese actors, then these films will not be on the control list, as many as you can. For example, to own an American movie studio, all those films would be OK. Uh, if it's co-production, there's no control already. Uh, we, uh, there's a, a f company known as Legend, uh, they've just launched a, a film uh, called uh, The Grey Wall. That film is not on the control list because it's a co-production. Any American companies, as long as you have a co-production, as long as the Chinese investment is more than 30%, it'll be fine. I think there is something special about Chinese film. You, you look at some countries are very good at producing film. You know, France began it, then America took over with Hollywood, you now have India with Bollywood. W w what is the special thing about Chinese entertainment? Do you think there is something culturally different about Chinese film? Uh, of course, China has something special. Chinese films focused on the emotional aspect. Hollywood is all about the big scale screening. Uh, the US saving the world, that type. Uh, in China, we don't see films of China saving the world. Uh, the story is not made up yet. Uh, Chinese films tend to talk about emotions, relationship between people. So China has something special, but there is something to watch for. 
more and more Chinese prefer to see domestically produced films. I see that trend already. For example, Japan, Korea, and India, they don't limit import films. Any Hollywood movies go in, but in Japan, Korea, and India, Hollywood movies are not the dominant ones. So, Chinese prefers to see Chinese films. I think that's going to be a trend. So, if Hollywood wants to take up a large market share, they need to learn how to cater to Chinese tastes, uh, not just uh, uh, those uh, super people. Of Chinese film that could be exported to the world, that, that would work outside China? Well, the Great Wall is the first attempt. The Legends production uh, invested uh, 150 million US dollars. That's a big scale thing. That's the first attempt of a Chinese movie going onto the world stage. There's only one US actor, the rest are Chinese. It's a story out of China based on the Great Wall. This is an, a, an experiment. If what well, well, it, it's hitting 200 million US dollars within China already. Um, around the world, if we can hit 400 to 500 million US dollars, then this would be a success story. It means that Chinese production, Chinese story can also be a box office hit. But of course, uh, we are still uh, way behind Hollywood. We're just beginning. Do you make money from your entertainment business or do you still see it as something that loses money but one day will make money? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. no. I'm a businessman. Of course, profitability comes first. So people in China uh, attack me for uh, focusing on box office. Uh, I, I can't do that. If, if I lose money, my company, I'm a listed company, of course we need to make money. That's the first. But to how Hollywood began, the people who built Hollywood were people who owned real estate. They owned show theatres where people were showing movies and then they went and started making movies themselves. Would you, would you consider buying a Hollywood studio? As I said, people have talked about you as a possible owner of Paramount. <coughs> oh. Well, I bought uh, Legend. That's already a second line investment because there are only six companies as the tier one. Um, uh, Universal is very big, we know. Um, uh, well, then we see uh, The Great War. Uh, there are many films already. But of course, if we are able to buy one of the top six, that would be a great thing to do. However, these uh, six companies are not in a silly mood. So that's an issue we can't crack. Became available. <laughs> uh. Well, let me just uh, uh, communicate that message. I will be a happy buyer. Does it worry you at all when you see what happened to the Japanese in Hollywood? I was living in Hollywood at the time, and I lived below... My house was below a man who worked for Columbia or TriStar, and every day more and more builders would come up to his house bringing more and more wonderful things and blocking my road all with the Japanese money that was being wasted at Columbia and TriStar. And that when foreigners buy American Hollywood assets, sometimes it doesn't work. Is that, is that a, have you learnt lessons mm. from previous people who have tried to do this? Mm. So far, foreign investment into Hollywood has not seen great success. Uh, we've seen Indian companies trying, the Japanese, and uh, among others. But we are a bit different from them. First, we have a very large market. China is already number two in the world and still growing very fast. So if we were to buy a company in the US, we would not want to distribute worldwide. Our objective will be co-production to show in China as well as the rest of the world. In other words, we will be able to recover 
significant amount of cost from China. Secondly, we have an advantage. We started with channels in North America, Europe and China. I'm number one already. So we have the cinema channels. Therefore, distribution will be easier. So it is my estimate that if we were to buy something in Hollywood, we would stand a better chance of being successful than others. Big factor, as, as we all know, is politics. Um, we have Donald Trump. He has appeared. Um, he is not making nice noises about about China at the moment. And you know, you have you have said that America shouldn't risk losing twenty thousand jobs in the entertainment business because of this. <coughs> Congress is looking at the issue of you know Chinese investment in in Hollywood. Do, how do you look at that? Do you think this is just protectionism? Or do you think there is, do you understand something about what the Americans are saying? Uh, this is certainly part of protectionism. So far, the US government has not launched any censorship or, or control of the entertainment. Uh, they've only done it to manufacturing and uh, defense industries. But there are. Uh, congressmen writing letters saying that uh, there will be more uh, examination and control of uh, investment into entertainment. That will be a step back. That will be uh, about protectionism emerging in the US. President Xi said yesterday already that will be uh, bad for both parties, no winners. Uh, the investment into uh, US is a good thing. The main growth market of English language films out of US is actually China, not anywhere else. A major source of income, the growth part, the new growth part, will have to come from China. Yeah. In, in, the, in India, it's a large market, but there's hardly any growth, nor in other countries. So mainly, the main market is the English language films is in China. So if China were to retaliate, it will be bad for both parties. So I do not wish to see that uh, scenario materializing. We have uh, asked the chairman of the uh, Film Association of the US to pass a message to uh, Mr. Trump. Uh, let's leave the entertainment industry alone. No war, please. It is different. You, you talked about earlier the Chinese have limits on the number of American films that come in. It, is the answer for both sides to have no limits, or do you think there is something about entertainment where people should be able to limit what comes in, what goes out? Uh. Well, in China, although we say there is control, as I said, there's also different categories, co-production, uh, outright purchase of rights, there are different channels into China. Uh, just absorb some Chinese investment, then there will be no control. Uh, in the US, more and more companies now are doing co-production. For example, uh, they will just allocate a few films to, to be co-productions. That's a one way of uh, bypassing control. But I would like to say that the U.S. government, uh, if it were to control investment, that would be a bad thing. If I was a Republican congressman, what would you say to encourage me to trust you to run, a, to, to be able to run a big part of Hollywood? I'm not sending Chinese over. It's still a company run by Americans. Uh, we don't interfere with the content. Uh, I just want the profit. I have proven that the purchase of U.S. cinemas, well, after the person, people were worried about Chinese film uh, cinemas, but we've proven they are still showing U.S. films. There's no change. Therefore, I think there's no need for the worry. And I can tell you, Republicans are not worried about us. I think it's the dem Democrats. Uh, and that letter I was referring to uh, was from a Democrat uh, congressman.
ask you lastly about um, sport. When you went into sport, is, is that really a place where you can make money? You, you said you made money out of film and entertainment. Is sport, is Atletico Madrid really somewhere where you can make m money? Well, clubs don't make money. Uh, they burn money. And that, that is why they, what, they wanted me to be the majority holder, number one shareholder. I said, no, I just wanted to be number two because I have a, a few dozens of kids to be trained there, about 30 each year. Each year. I want them to train these uh, young kids seriously. And that is why I became a shareholder. So going into sport, it's about branded events. So that is why I've signed uh, exclusive uh, commercial deals with uh, a few dozens of uh, international organizations uh, um, uh, covering football, uh, ice hockey, and cycling, etc. Therefore, I will be able to bring them into China, uh, events that uh, were not there before. For example, recently uh, we did a football league game. This year we're going to start a cycling, uh, world cycling tour. This was non-existent in China before. Also, we bought WTEC. Uh, so we're going to do triathlon, Ironman. So the idea, obviously, is to make money. Because I'm a businessman, uh, I have to stress that. Working together with international organizations, launching new events in China gives us one thing, exclusive. For example, I do a top tier cycling race, no one else can do it. If I do a top tier football game, no one else can do it. So that's our approach. My love for sports is too prompt. First of all, I, I do love it. I used to love football. Secondly, uh, sport gives us money. I love money. For many people. Um, it, what about football? What, what happens in the end? There has been talk of you setting up a super league, which would be more like a global league rather than just the European Champions League. Is, is, will we end up with matches between Atletico Madrid and a, time, and a team in Shanghai, will it be all the world, possibly except America? Is that the way that football is going to go, soccer is going to go? No, no, no. Uh, I don't have the ability to, to do that, no. My thinking is that uh, let's improve football in China uh, make China, Chinese football slightly better, that would be very happy. Uh, competing with Europe? No, it's impossible. World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was a joke in China, ask God when will China ever win, the, uh, and God cried. The same, if you look at all these things, you, you have been a sponsor with of FIFA. Are you now happier with what is happening at FIFA? Uh. I started as a top tier sponsor last year. Uh, they, they, they were in transition, ch changing people, kept changing. Uh, we, we met different people every few days. But I think it's settling down a bit. Recently, uh, it is said that uh, this uh, FIFA was going to expand the number of uh, players. So that's been passed. I, I don't go very often, but it's uh, one of my subsidiaries that uh, goes uh, to their meetings very often. Uh, whether there is a fundamental change, I'm not sure. Uh, but I can see their objective of expansion is to make more money because the 32 teams and 48 teams are earn different income. Therefore, that's one thing that you can see very clearly that the new FIFA is more focused on income now. You have been very successful in real estate. You are obviously growing um, a lot in entertainment and sports. Where is, are you looking at somewhere else to go next? What, what, what fields, what industries interest you after these ones? 
Two. One. We are working on already. It's difficult to call it an internet company. We call it Internet of Things, or that's an American term, but in China, uh, I don't quite know how to call it. S -s -s Some people call it Oto. In other words, uh, linking up with uh, physical, a uh, brick mortar linked up with internet. This is a company we're setting up. It's a big internet company, so to speak. Last year, uh, the, there were 80 million members, card members of, of this company. Uh, over 100,000 uh, companies uh, joined. It was very fast, uh, but China is big, of course, obviously, but the speed of growth still exceeded our expectations. Last year, the company proved that it boosted the performance of uh, brick-and-mortar companies. So this is the difference between us and other internet companies. All other internet companies are growing at the expense of uh, brick-and-mortar, but we link the two up. So this is something that we are focusing on, a big thing. The company has uh, very good earning potentials. Next year we'll be uh, in profit already. Uh, uh, I've just discussed this with the Goldman Sachs and uh, with uh, other uh, companies, for example, Google and Microsoft. They all think this is a good model. This has not been done before. The second thing is we are considering to uh, develop a chain of hospitals in China. In China, healthcare has been the monopoly of the government. A year ago, the market was opened to the private sector, allowing private companies to set up a comprehensive hospitals. Secondly, allowing foreign doctors to come to practice in China. A few months ago, there was a new policy. Doctors at hospitals are also allowed to uh, take patients outside the hospitals to boost their own income. These are big changes. Uh, providing the conditions for private hospitals. And we have several hundred large commercial centers uh, in our portfolio, and we have the team to do it. So we are now thinking, should we perhaps go into health care? So these are the two industries where uh, I'm talking about. One we are working on, the other is being planned. American films in China, we have, a, we have a limit on our distribution and we've reached the end of our 30 minutes. But thank you very, very mm. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.